I think uh, in the paper, Chernobyl Birds Have Smaller Brains, which is mm. very famous, there's a very interesting um, part in which you state that oxidization leads to development errors and I think, uh, maybe I'm not misleading, to psychological problems in the end or development errors in this direction. Uh, is this right? And could you explain <laughs> it? Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a little more complex. Yeah, but, of course. But I think, and, and simpler too. Uh, okay. So I think, you know, it's well known that, that uh, radiation uh, can lead to oxidative stress inside yes. the cells yes. Uh, yes. of all living organisms. And this oxidative stress, if it's not uh, dealt with using yeah. antioxidants, yes. can lead to genetic damage okay. Okay. and uh, can lead to all sorts of genetic damage. Okay. Uh, we think that one of the causes of neurological developmental problems that leads to smaller brains is a result of this oxidative stress as well. Okay. We think uh, much of the problems with fertility that we see in the birds, so we see damage in the sperm, we see the sperm yeah. as being in, less able to swim, uh, yeah. we think that this may be the result again of oxidative stress. And so uh, in, in terms of the birds uh, who have smaller brains, we have, we have also demonstrated that their survival is is not as good. They don't live as long, okay, okay. and and we presume this is because they are less capable of, of solving environmental problems. Yes, of, yes you know, okay. of finding food, of dealing with predators, and and we see this as reduced survival from one year to the next. Uh, the, the ones with smaller brains are much less likely to live an additional year, uh, and so uh, are significantly less likely. So it, it's it's. Um, Things are these, these issues are all connected to each other, uh, mm. you know. They, but we do think that oxidative stress yes. uh, likely plays a, a significant role in affecting many different kinds of characters, as we've seen in yeah. other talks today. And we've seen it, but in uh, sorry, for the yeah. and we've seen it in link with high doses. I've seen two gray, six gray, some, but I've heard it's. It's possible that low and slow doses cause less radicals, and then they uh, cause this oxidative stress. You know, so, so there's no. much we don't know, yeah. much we don't understand, yeah. and and there are conflicting results, especially down yeah. at the lower dose rates. Yes, uh, and you know I think uh, that some of these conflicting results re are the result of differences among different types of organisms, so different mm -hmm. species, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. different individuals within a population have mm -hmm. different physiological responses. And so we see this in the birds, oh, for instance, okay. some species show no effect uh, of okay. this low dose radiation. There are some species, in fact, that seem to be uh, doing better now, in Chernobyl at least, uh, suggesting that there may be adaptation. So there's tremendous variability in the response. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this may reflect genetic differences in their ability yes. to, to uh, deal with oxidative stress, to deal with genetic damage, to repair the genetic damage. Uh, and we don't understand, uh, we mm. don't have sufficient knowledge mm. yet uh, concerning the variability in these responses. Uh, okay. So so it's easier to work at high doses. Oh, okay. It's I much see. easier yeah. scientifically because you see a much larger effect. Okay. And okay. so it makes, and this is one reason why we do our research in the very, the most contaminated parts of Chernobyl, as well as areas that are much less contaminated, yes. as well as clean areas, so that we have this full range yes. of exposures. It gives us much more power, much more scientific power, statistical power, to look for these relationships. And this is why in laboratory studies they also they use much higher doses, again, so that they can see the effect with fewer individuals, so that, so that the studies can be smaller and cheaper, much cheaper to do. Uh, if, if to recreate these low-dose exposure uh, situations uh, would require much larger experimental studies that would be very expensive and, and there's no money for this kind of research. That's so, a, so that's why so they hit them with a much larger This dose. is why we and many others are so um, happy that you do these studies as oh, one of the you. rare scientists well, on this planet doing it. We're, it's we're, unbelievable. You're quoted everywhere because there's, no, there's no, nobody else. It's unbelievable. Yeah, 
It's uh, and, and, and of course the reason there's nobody else is because there is no money, there's yes. no funding for this kind of research. Okay. Uh, we've, we've been successful at finding independent sources of funding to, to keep this going. So and uh, that's the only reason we've managed to do this. And uh, of course there's the other difficulty is getting permission to do this kind yeah. of research. Yeah, yeah. This is not simple or straightforward. We've experienced similar things, yeah. yes, but in another uh, area. Uh, so thank you very much for your work.